Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers factors affecting the SN2 mechanism, substitution of the alkyl halide. The SN2 reaction is quite general and very useful, but it does have limitations. We're going to address some of these limitations in the following videos. The first thing that we need to look at is the effect of the substitution of the alkyl halide. In other words, what is the substitution here? Are these carbon groups? Are these hydrogens? Is this a primary, secondary, tertiary alkyl halide or maybe a methyl halide? The next item is the leaving group ability. So what is the nature of this leaving group, this X? Is it a good leaving group or is it a poor leaving group? Then there's the strength of the nucleophile. How good of a nucleophile is this? And then finally, the reaction solvent plays a role. So in other words, what are these species dissolved up in? That can make a difference in terms of the way the SN2 reaction works. So in this video, we're going to cover substitution of the alkyl halide and the effect that that plays in the SN2 reaction. The most important thing is that steric hindrance slows the SN2 reaction. That's the big take home message from this slide. And we're going to see that through a series of examples. So the first example involves this methyl halide reacting. So the carbon here has bonded to the X group and has no R groups attached. So the nucleophile here has a relatively unhindered path to the carbon. And the product, substitution product here, forms really quite easily. So we're going to take a look at relative SN2 reaction rate. So in other words, how fast does one reaction go compared to the other? So for a methyl halide, that reaction rate is going to be just given a value of a thousand. So a thousand would be fast. Now we'll compare that to how some of the other substitution patterns uh, work. So with a primary alkyl halide, primary alkyl halides now have one R group. So this is a primary alkyl halide. That group, that R group, provides some steric hindrance it effectively blocks the nucleophile to some extent. The nucleophile has a harder time getting to the carbon to make a bond to it than it would have before. That steric hindrance slows down the SN2 reaction a fair bit, and the rate for a primary alkyl halide, relatively speaking, is about 50, so it's quite a bit slower than for a methyl halide. Secondary alkyl halides have two R groups, one here and one here, for example, and those two R groups provide even more steric hindrance that tends to block the approach of the nucleophile trying to attack the carbon. So for a secondary alkyl halide, the steric hindrance is even more extreme, and relative rate of this reaction would be one, so it's a thousand times slower than the methyl halide and 50 times slower than the primary alkyl halide. So these reactions are slow, and some reactions with secondary alkyl halides don't work at all. It really depends. Then finally, there's tertiary alkyl halides. Tertiary alkyl halides have one, two, three carbon groups attached to the carbon that's attached to the halogen, and these have a pretty extreme amount of steric hindrance. And so in these cases, the reaction essentially doesn't work at all. There's no reaction, zero reaction rate. Tertiary alkyl halides are just too hindered. The nucleophile just is not able to get past all of this bulk to get to the carbon. The take home message for substitution is that steric hindrance is really a big factor in slowing down the SN2 reaction. So the first thing you should do when you're trying to establish whether a SN2 substitution reaction is going to work or not is look at the substitution of the alkyl halide and classify it as methyl, primary, secondary, or tertiary. And then you'll have an idea at least of how readily the SN2 substitution reaction may work. 